What's up, America? Welcome to Race Support. As always, I'm your colorful host, Jordan Brown. Last episode of Race Support, we discussed racism and the concepts that surround it. The question of racism presence in America has motivated protests about this controversial issue. These protests include everyday people to famous celebrities as well. NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick has divided many opinions in the nation this year by kneeling during the national anthem throughout the season. Those who watch football and have been involved on social media know that this has sparked outrage and also support from more than just people of color. Kaepernick kneeling has been a silent protest to help bring awareness and support to people of color being discriminated in America, specifically during police brutalities. Kaepernick using status and NFL platform to help start change is a great effort. After an exhibition game, Kaepernick told NFL media, quote, I am not going to stand up to, sh to show pride in the flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color, unquote. Kaepernick's idea of kneeling actually came from a discussion with a former Green Ber Ber Beret and NFL long snapper Nate Boyer about how to get the message out there without taking away from military. Now, a lot of Americans have, have not responded to Kaepernick's decision very well to kneeling during the national anthem. President-elect Donald Trump and Senator Ted Cruz has asked Kaepernick to leave the country and to be condemned for protesting. Ted Cruz wrote to Twitter saying, quote, to all the athletes who have made millions of Americans freedom, stop insulting our flag, our nation, and our heroes, unquote. Celebrities including Rob Lowe, Kate Upton, Scott Bayo, and Eric Bowling have taken to social media showing the disapproval of Kaepernick's actions. Service members have also felt his actions to be disrespectful, and many NFL fans went to social media by burning Kaepernick's jersey. Now, for many Americans against Kaepernick's choice to kneel, there are many who have supported him, even made his movement bigger. Women's soccer player Megan Rapino took a knee before her National Women's Soccer League match. Denver Broncos, Miami Dolphins, Kansas City Chiefs, New England Patriots and Los Angeles Rams have all had players who either taken a knee or represented their support to protest by raising their fists in the air. Even professional basketball players, singers, high school football players, honor bands, and other college football players have found ways to join a protest by locking arms, raising fists, or kneeling as well. Many celebs like J. Cole, John Legend, Kwame Bell, Kareem, Tara Owens, and many others have shown support by taking to social media and wearing a jersey or speaking out on television. Comedian and Family Feud host Steve Harvey tweeted, quote, In my own opinion, the anthem protest isn't anti-government slash military. It's drawing attention to how the country isn't living up to the words, unquote. There's, there's an idea that Kaepernick is a horrible person, has no respect for military members, which is far from the truth. He means no disrespect when silent protesting. Kaepernick has all respect in the world for those who fight for his right. He has said this in many interviews and demonstrated interacting with those members. A trend was even started on Twitter called hashtag veterans for Kaepernick. This showed the misconception that all military, mem all military members were against when in reality a lot of them were proud of what he was doing. At the end of the day, whether you support it or don't, Colin Kaepernick has the right to. In this country, we respect the right for others to have different opinions and let their voice be heard. It is always, no, you must protest in a silent manner. But when somebody does it, it's no, that's not the, that's not the way either. I never understand why many people respond with, if you don't like it here, then leave. Why should that be said or be an option? This is his home, just like all other Americans. What's wrong with making the country better than what it is right now? What's wrong with making the flag stand for and represent for all people in this country? This only creates negative messages in, in this country. Hastings College sociology professor Robert Ketlitz talked to me how the idea of people of color in America perpetrated negatively is one of the main issues with race. As I uh, explain the internalization of, of negative messages about groups of people, uh, no one is immune, you know, and, and so uh, black people internalize the same negative messages that, that white people get, that black people are thugs and, and gangsters and pimps, and, and, uh, uh, and, and so you see a lot of black police officers treating black men the same way that that white police officers do because they, they're acting on the same definitions that they've internalized. You know, so what we have to do if we're really going to improve race relations in the United States, uh, we, we have to change the definitions that we have. 
uh, and, and be more fair. So, so for black people, there have to be a, a greater number of positive definitions about who black people are, feel what other people feel. And if we could really truly empathize, uh, and, and if I, as a white person, could understand what black people experience, I guarantee I would probably change my behavior completely. Because I wouldn't want to make you feel bad, but so we don't know. The very important point is being missed. We shouldn't be arguing whether it's his silent protest is acceptable or not, but should focus on the reason why Kaepernick and many others now are doing it. The racial injustice and in killing of blacks in America is what our attention should be on. Let's take a look at what 2016 has shown us. On July 5th, Alton, Alton Sterling was selling CDs outside of a food market in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. During that time, a homeless man pressured him for money. Sterling then showed him his gun to convince the man to leave him alone, which led to the homeless man making a 911 call regarding Sterling. Once officers arrived on scene, the situation escalated. Two officers forced Sterling up against the car to the ground and then shot him over video. His cell phone video was leaked to the internet for all to see. America then woke up to the news of another police shooting two days later in Falcon Heights, Minnesota. Philando Castle and his fiancee, Davin Reynolds, were pulled over for a broken taillight. Reynolds' four-year-old daughter was also in the back seat. According to Reynolds, when asked for his license registration, Castle informed the officer he had a legal firearm and was then shot four times for reaching for his information. Reynolds expressed while recording after Castle bled right next to her. Her 10-minute video was broadcast on Facebook and then later on other social media outlets. Now, protests broke out after they saw these videos, but the aftermath didn't stop there. During a protest in Dallas, Texas, Michael, Mike, Micah Xavier Johnson, an ex-U.S. Army Reserve, ambushed police officers at, at the rally, killing five officers and injuring six others. Now, on September 16th, officers responded to a car that was left in the middle of the road. They were told a man, Terrence Crutcher, was running from the vehicle. Crutcher's hands were in the air as he walked back to his car when police were on the scene on the video. Officers said he reached in the side of the video while one officer shot his taser while the other opened fire. Crutcher had no weapon on him or in the car at the time. Soon after Tulsa on September 20th in Charlotte, North Carolina, officers were at an apartment complex looking to serve a warrant. They ran into Keith Scott, who wasn't who they were looking for. He uh, attracted their attention by being perceived to be holding a gun. I'll take a moment to remind you that in North Carolina, carrying a gun openly is illegal. In the video that went viral, officers blocked Scott within a few yards, and Scott was never seen pointing a gun. Officers shouted to repeat, repeatedly to drop the gun, but no other less confrontational approach is shown. As Scott stepped out of his SUV, one of the officers shoots him. None of the videos show, shown make it clear that what was in his hand. As soon as news of the incident broke out, citizens of Charlotte broke out to the streets to protest. These protests lasted until dash cam and body cam footage was released. <sighs> You've probably heard of one of these police brutality stories before, but there are many that go under the radar in the media. In Tupelo, Mississippi on June 18th, Antoine Schumpert was pulled over for a routine traffic stop and began fleeing his car. Officer Tyler Cook set a canine on Schumpert, who was hiding under a home. The dog then attacked him, leaving him scratches on his body and gashing a hole in his testicles. But that wasn't enough. When Officer Cook approached Shumpert, he shot him four times. Four. Five hours later, Shumpert, was, Shumpert died in handcuffs while in the hospital. His four siblings said his body had been booted, had boot, boot marks on his head, open cut on his eye, and scratches across his entire body. I've only talked about five situations, but more have happened this year, and there are instances from years before this as well. By talking about these shootings, I'm not saying that all cops are racist or all cops are bad, but the ones that do wrong should be held accountable or trained differently. If you keep hearing horrible stories like these, then only keep creating a destructive culture that all cops are bad and to be feared. Until Americans stop paying more attention to silent protests instead of the unlining societal issues sparking the protests, then American society and culture will not resolve the racial conflict. On the next episode of The Race Report, we'll be looking at the presidential campaign and analyzing police involvement in this year's racial issues. I'm Jordan Brown. This is The Race Report. Stay woke.